So welcome everyone to the 1050 session. I'm Mark Blossom with Instructure. Um, I hope you're enjoying another beautiful day here in Park City. For those who are here for the first time, I hope you like it. I moved here a couple years ago from San Francisco. So my life is truly your vacation. So I'm digging this. So, um, we're proud to uh, introduce Carrie Saarinen from Brown University. Brown, as you know, are great friends of ours here at Instructure. Um, I want to give you a little information on Carrie. It's always good to know, again, who is speaking to you, get a little insight. And again, like I said, take the time to go out and meet these people, get to know them. So Carrie, with 12 years of experience in educational programs serving many different learner groups, Carrie has a broad body of knowledge in academic technology, web development, and social media. She has a solid history of successful program development and project management and demonstrated ability to support faculty, staff, and students. She is known for identifying solutions, which is really true, by the way, to potential issues before they become problems and for being a leader and innovator with emerging technology. Currently, along with colleagues at Brown and friends at Baypath College um, and the Instructure Northeast Regional Director, Carrie's organizing a Canvas user group meeting for Canvas users in the Northeast region. That's in New England, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and more. So stay tuned for more info on that. Get her email address if you need to and get connected there if you're from that region because it's really cool what she's doing there. So Carrie, thanks so much. Thanks, Take Mark. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I never get mic'd because I am always loud enough. So I never have a problem, but we'll see. They'll adjust it as needed. How many, and keep your hands up after you answer. Is this your first in StructureCon? Second in StructureCon? Doesn't it feel good to stretch? Oh. Oh, feels good. Okay. So if you want to play along, please go to the InstructureCon course site because I have uploaded some sample student writing so you can play along. So we're going to look at some rubrics and you can use that rubric to look at some sample writing and start to think about how you might do this at home. If you're teaching or if you're working with teachers, these are some things that you can easily do very quickly when you get home. In fact, I learned from Allison this week to put the big picture first because that's what you're going to remember the most. What I learned while teaching a course, I, in Canvas it was really easy to just add it on. When I had a realization, I could just add it right on and just keep moving and I didn't have to like wait till the next semester and rebuild it in. It was really great. So you can play along. There is a PDF and if you open it up, there's a table of contents. Um, if you don't have the online and you just want to watch, I do have some snippets that I'll show as well. Okay. And away we go. That's way too big. Okay. So thanks for the great introduction. So the, the background on this, a few years ago I was working at a medical school and part of the medical school curriculum, the first two years the students are in lecture. They sit in lecture and they sit in lab, that's all they do, eight hours a day. The third and fourth year, they're out on the clinics. This is the first time they're working with patients. It's the first time they have to break bad news to a patient. It's the first time they have to tell a patient that they're going to die. It's the first time they have to have those conversations with the family members. It's very difficult, very stressful, and it's very emotional. So one of the things that med schools often do is have the students do some reflective writing so that they can share these experiences with their peers, with their faculty mentors, and get some guidance on how to handle the situation. I thought it'd be really neat if they did that in blogs instead of essays. So a few years ago, I did a, a project where we had half the class do essays and half the class do blogs, and then we compared them. And we had hundreds of students do this at two different institutions, at one in Massachusetts and one at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. And we had uh, a, a, lot, a lot of writing to assess and determine and find agreement on the evaluation. We use Mesereau's reflection tool as our basis. So these are the, the kind of, these are the levels of reflection we were looking for in the student writing. That it was non-reflective, that it was reporting only. This is what I did today, this is what happened, that's it. There's, they're not processing or synthesizing that information to any higher level. And then reflection on experience. Thinking about what happened and maybe making a personal connection. And we actually split that up into a high level and a low level because some students were a little bit higher than others in there. And then the highest level, we thought, was that reflection on awareness, where not only did they 
make a connection to something and make a, and, and feel it. Like they weren't just aware of it, but they felt it and they could project. Well, the next time that happens, I'm gonna do, you know, I'll respond in a different way. So these are some of the experiences of that student writing. And, and again, these are medical school students. Um, but if you were to look at this, you could see that there's definitely some depth as you go through the different levels. The first student was just reporting what happened. They read a CT scan, no big deal. The second student kind of thinking, you know, and, and acknowledging their feelings and their response to their actions, to their habits, to their interactions with patients. And the final one is thinking more about, well, what does this mean as a professional going forward? How am I gonna deal with these issues going forward? What does this mean for me as a student, my role and my interaction with the hospital? So without question, we definitely saw evidence of quality and learning and deep reflection in that student writing. Flash forward, it was a couple years ago. You can Google me and find that lovely article and all the data. So this spring, I was teaching a class at Salem State University on 21st century classroom technology. And this is, a, this is from a Japanese magazine in, I think, 1956. And uh, that's how they thought classrooms would be in the future. I love the enforcer robot. The kid got the answer wrong and the robot beats him over the head. So my students in this class are, are all teachers or teachers in training. Um, there are teachers, kindergarten teachers, high school music teachers, high school writing teachers, and a few instructional technologists in the public school system. So that's kind of where I was in the springtime. And, then, and this was a 100% online class. I found myself reviewing the online discussions with that level of reflection thing kicking in. Like, so this is a comment that I posted on one of my students' uh, online discussion posts, and I'm like, wait a minute, I know this stuff. This is that reflection stuff I did in med school. Oh, yeah, this is cool. And I thought, well, I wonder if I could apply this through Canvas, because that speed grader tool is so awesome that I could just add that right in. I can add the levels of reflection right in to the speed grader tool, right? With the outcomes. So I had already developed the rubric. If I add levels of reflection to the learning outcomes and just tag that onto the rubric, it helps gives me a sense of where they're kind of going. Are they getting deeper over time as the class moves on? How are they really incorporating the class readings? So I was thinking about this translating the medical school to this regular teacher education program. So is the student doing non-reflective reporting work? Are they just reading the articles and summarizing them in the class discussion? They're participating because they're posting in the discussion, which is good, but are they, really, are they learning? There's no evidence there that they're learning if they're just summarizing the article. I know what the article is. I don't need them to summarize it for me. I need to nudge them to start thinking about, well, what does that mean for you? Has that ever touched you in your teaching? Have you ever had that type of experience in your classroom or with your students? Or even better, what does that mean going forward? Now that you've read these articles and you're having these discussions and learning from your peers, how is that going to impact you as a teacher going forward? So as I'm reading their discussion posts, I'm giving them comments back through the speed grader every week and trying to nudge them into that realm. And I started seeing immediate immediate depth. They were getting deeper and deeper and deeper. I also noticed, as, as I said, I didn't have to rebuild this. I just added it on. These are my discussion guidelines. The last bullet I had already built in there right from the get-go. You know, please provide some personal experiences. So these are some actual student responses in the class. So before I like kind of really did this on a more formal level, I took some old discussions and I applied it to see if it would work. So these are some of them. So this is non-reflective. This was a discussion on digital citizenship and what does that mean? How do we teach digital citizenship to kindergarten students? Can you? Yes. Should you? Absolutely. So these are the, some of the discussions. Someone's just kind of making a broad statement. It's not really reflective, not really relating it to her own experience as a teacher. And then somebody else, um, talking about citations, she's making a connection saying, when I was a student, I was confused. 
And she's starting to push it forward and saying, well, now I'm the teacher, so what can I do? So I already started to see that they were already getting there. And if I could identify the students who weren't going that deep, I could nudge them a little bit more and try to get them there. Because I knew, because they're teachers in training, that they're going to probably do this with their students too. So I thought it'd be really worth the effort to go this extra mile. So here's some other examples. Um, again, non-reflective, just kind of, this was a 21st century technology discussion. Just general classroom technology, how do we deal with students with cell phones ringing in the class? And some students, you know, got deeper than others. Some could really relate. And I said, okay, after I did these samples, I was like, all right, let's just move this forward. Are you with me? You got it? All right. So I had my standard rubric. All I did was create the outcome and add it on. That's simple. Have you all seen the speed grader, the rubrics, and the outcomes tool? You're all nodding. You're with me? Awesome. I didn't do a lot of images. I want to focus on the student writing. And that's one of the great things about doing this with speed grader and the rubrics is that you can really focus on the student writing. When we did the blog project and we had 130 student essays, it was all in documents and we're sitting there with highlighters like doing that. It's so easy in Canvas because you have the writing right there, you have the rubric with the levels of reflection and as you're reading, you're referring to that. It's awesome, beautiful. So this is what that looks like. You have the student writing. This is the discussion post. It's assignment. It's required. They have to post once and comment on two others. So when you're in the speed grader, you see it and the rubric props up right there. Awesome, right? So this is an example of a module in my class. And uh, it starts off with some instruction and then the series of readings that they have to do. And then the class discussion. In this particular week, they were still working on a, on a, larger, a larger project. So they had these four readings that they had to do. Some students could summarize them. That's the reporting, low reflection. Some might identify more with one reading and another and really go fairly deep. So I wanted to see what would happen. That PDF that you have, now's the time to make that. And if you don't have the PDF, here's a snippet. So this is the 21st century teaching and learning um, discussion. So if you want to just take a few minutes and look at that, and I want you to tell me what you think. Is it reporting, kind of non-reflective? Is it reflection on experience? So they get somewhat deep, or is it really deep? You can look at the full article if you have the PDF. Does anything jump out at anybody you want to share? The professional experience? Is that what you see there? They're making a connection? Now remember, these are teachers in training, so they're thinking about, you know, they're, they're, they're teaching. They have their own classes, and they're, they have to teach the MCAS test, the standardized test in Massachusetts. That's that referral. So we're talking about 21st century teaching and learning. And this person is, is thinking about what's happening in his school and what that means to him, how that makes him feel, what that makes him think. I think that's a nice mid-level kind of a reflection on experience. Do you agree? Yeah. Any other comments on that one? Anything else jump out at you? Yes. Do you have the PDF? At the end of the PDF is the, the discussion, um, the, the full discussion description, and it's on the instructor site. And I, know we, I knew we wouldn't have time to get into all that, but it is there. So again, you're, you're doing this in the speed grader, so it's really easy. You're reading that full post, which is fairly lengthy, and you can, and you can do the reflection, uh, assess for the reflection right there. Here's another one, the same topic. So I'm trying to do this on an individual level. In fact, I had a student from Saudi Arabia and a student from China in this class. So that English was a second language, so their writing was much more condensed and simplified, but there was still depth there. Particularly the, the woman from Saudi Arabia, because they, they had no technology there, and they didn't have a lot of women teachers there. So what she was experiencing as a graduate student in America was just blowing her mind. And every day, it was like, her head was exploding. It was great. 
So thinking about this text, again, read it and look at the, the levels. Does anything jump out at you? Excellent. Great. Anybody agree or disagree? Great. Looks like you guys are all on the same page. When we did that initial study, that was a formal approved, you know, uh, study through the two universities, and we had to find that level of agreement. So we spent six months defining what the levels were, and then we had to run a full pilot, you know, and yeah, you can read the article. Um, so here's an example of a full discussion for the person in the back who, who asked, are these open-ended discussions? So, you know, we had our required readings, but I really wanted to push them to, to think beyond that and really apply that knowledge. Um, so this is an example of, of the types of discussions that I would post. And also that's in the PDF if you want to look at that a little bit longer. So this question is, are we learning enough about technology to use it effectively for teaching? This was great. We had 58 posts in this out of the 14 students, so that was pretty great. So this is a student, and again, take a look at the levels in the writing. Any thoughts? Yes. So this, I think that's really interesting that you pulled that out. What's your name? Sorry, Kevin. I think that's interesting that you pulled that out because I had that aha moment really early, like week three in the class. So then I went back and looked at the data and then I added it on. So we're moving forward through the class now. And as I'm pushing them in the feedback to the discussions in the speed grader, go Canvas, which is awesome, um, you know, I'm starting to push them. And so the next conversation, they try a little bit harder. And I definitely, definitely saw improvement in the quality and depth of their online discussions. Thank you for pulling that out. It's absolutely true. Has another one? What do you notice about this post? Question marks, yep. What does that mean? <laughs> Excellent. Go ahead. Yeah, great. So how, how does this impact the learning experience for a young teacher, for someone who's who's new to teaching, struggling to find their place, wants to learn everything, so eager, or a, a teacher who's been teaching a long time and has gone back to school to get their master's degree so that they can fill in the blanks and move ahead because they recognize that their students want this and they need to learn and figure out. This online discussion for them, it, it so rapidly became a very safe, and nurturing environment where they felt comfortable kind of bearing their souls almost and saying, I really struggle with this. I don't know how to do this. And the comments on these are just phenomenal. The support, like you're doing the right thing, keep doing that. Maybe in the suggestions, maybe if you try this, it'll help. It was just a phenomenal experience. And, and over time, as Kevin pointed out, just that they grew deeper and deeper and deeper and they were actually skipping that reporting. I stopped seeing that altogether. Here's the last one. Notice the uh, hyperlink there. <laughs> this was an actual post from, from the class. I was a little surprised to see that. <laughs> it's cool. 
aside from the reference to Canvas K through 12, does anything strike you as interesting about this? Where is he going with this conversation, with this discussion post? What do you think he's thinking? Is he starting to look outward, not only his experience, but thinking about his colleagues, thinking about the institution, thinking about the educational system as a whole? That was really getting deep. This guy's like really digging into it. This guy actually started talking about getting more involved. At the end, we had a post on commitments, like how am I gonna keep doing this? How am I gonna move this forward? And he said he's gonna get involved. He talked to a school principal and said, get me involved, I wanna do more. Put me on a board, put me on a committee. I see room for change and growth, get me involved. So this whole experience this, of taking this technology class not only taught him new things about wikis and blogs that he didn't know, but changed the way he taught, the way he thought, the way he saw himself as an educator in an online discussion, in a class, at a state school, you know, pretty powerful stuff. It is possible to have mind-blowing, groundbreaking, forward-thinking, super awesome, even related to Canvas, and I didn't prompt him to do that, discussions online. That was a fully online class. I never met them face-to-face. -face. We did, you know, chats online. We had a monthly chat. I had open office hours where they could come and we just hang out and talk. But we never met. I never met any of them. And they, most of them didn't know each other either. I think that's interesting. I'm curious to explore um, what that really means in hybrid classes. Like, I'd be interested if I were to do another, you know, three-year study. Like, what does that mean? Like, the students who participate online and the students that participate in the class, is there a difference on that level? It's interesting to see. Hard to document, but. Thank you. Any other comments, thoughts? Anybody doing anything similar in their online discussions? Do you use the rubric tool for online discussions? Yes. How, did, The, the picture of the enforcer robots, the, the classroom of the future. I like what you're thinking. What's your name, Sue? I like what you're thinking, and I thought the same thing as I was building out those modules, and I'm like, I don't know these people. I don't have that face time. I can't welcome them when they come in the room and make them feel at home. And I wasn't sure how they would respond to this open-ended, probably slightly unusual online discussion, so I did the first post so that they could comment on that and get into the practice. So the first week, that's what we did. Any other ideas, thoughts, comments? So this is uh, my contact information, just Google me. Um, my husband says there's too much of me on the internet, but it's all good and work-related, so I just leave it there. Um, I, NERCOMP is the Educause affiliate for the Northeast region. Do we have any Northeast region schools here? Awesome. 
awesome, awesome. Because we don't get to drink the Kool-Aid quite often enough, um, we're putting together a Northeast Regional user group. So we're going to meet in Norwood, Mass. in September to do more of this type of stuff. Um, so we hope you'll, you'll join us for that. Any other questions? Are we running really early? I feel like we're early. We have five minutes? Yes, please. Good question. So if students, uh, so if we're doing this online, I'm providing a lot of feedback. How are the students responding to that? Some students, um, I had to kind of coach a little bit on etiquette for these online discussions. They were copying and pasting a lot, so I was trying to curb that. Um, they were linking out to articles that had no relevance. I really wanted to focus on the, the course content. Um, so some of the feedback was there. The, student, the international students, they were nervous and hesitant for both of them. It was the first time taking an online class. Um, so whenever I commented, they commented back, and it, it would turn into this week-long discussion until the next assignment was due, and then that was a brand new comment thread back and forth. Um, and there were a few that took it personally. One student actually wrote me a formal email, like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what you mean. I can't read the context of what you're saying. She was saying, I wish we could talk face-to-face. -face. This was really, really early on. She was the one that I was trying to teach how to communicate online. And I said, well, why don't we set up a chat? And we had an online chat. And we were able to talk face to face. And that helped a lot. So it varied. I guess the bottom line is it varies by the student and what they need and what they perceive. Maybe some of them thought that they needed a little extra help, so they continued that conversation. And then others just weren't sure that they were reading me right and they wanted some clarification. So it really depended. There was another hand. Yes, please. All the all the sample writings that's student work. At the very bottom were those I only picked from two discussions, so those were the outline of the discussion. Right. So, so um, the two. Ex so it's it's it depended on the topic. I mean, some topics were really more personal experience. Like, what do you see out there? What's the hot gadget? What are people talking about in your school? And what does that mean? And and what's the impact? And where are we going? And how do we use that? And should we or shouldn't we? Just because we can doesn't mean we should. So some of it was really loose and not based on any real core curriculum. Um, but like a week like this, where we're talking about collaborative writing projects, not all of them had had experience doing that. So they needed some exposure to other teachers. So I picked these writings. There are four articles here about teachers' experience using different online collaborative tools. So those who had had experience could compare their own to these teachers. Those who had none could say, oh, OK. So that allowed them to have these discussions to think about, OK, now how would I do this? Or what does this mean for me? So a language student who didn't know that you could talk to students in another country through Skype, light bulbs, like fireworks, like crazy. So just by kind of, it's hard to explain. It's just kind of like this natural, like I just always imagine like what was this like if we were having this conversation. I would ask you, you would ask me, and we just keep going back and forth. I tried to do that as much as possible. So every week was kind of different. Yes, please. They did, I graded the students based on the student. I didn't compare student to student. I compared the student to the, to the work that they did the week before in the conversations that we were having. So um, 
the students who wanted more clarification, do I understand what you're saying? Do I understand the feedback? Those topics that they were unsure about, I would look to see evidence next week that they did understand it, and if they didn't, we would go back and kind of work through it again. So it was really just staying with the student and comparing their own work week to week and not doing side by side student to student because it was very diverse. We had a, a preschool teacher in a Montessori school. How unique is that to work with two and three year olds? And she was in a technology class. What did the two and three year olds do? You know, it was so different. She was very unique. But of course, in a graduate program too, you really want to tailor it to, you're not talking about foundational studies. You're talking about something that they can really apply to their day-to-day, -day, their professional career that's really going to matter to them. So we kind of have to you know, tailor it to the individual students simply because they're graduate students. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. So the peer, the, the other benefit of the online discussion, when you're requiring them to comment on each other's work, they learn from that. The, in, in part of the, the rubric was, you know, does this, you know, does this engage the students to, to post more, to go deeper? Like I wanted them to take that responsibility to not just talk, but to lead, you know, to, to ask questions even of each other in their own posts and their own comments back and forth. Yeah, how are we doing? We're, we're good, we're done? All right, thanks you guys, awesome, awesome!